Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 393, and today is going to be a good one. We are going to be covering the monthly Sunday gathering of Cabal Serrata. And that's, um, I'm so glad Maestro uh, <clears throat> Carlito reached out to me and said, you know, hey, we get together, you know, once a month on the last Sunday of the month, would you be interested in covering it? And I was absolutely, I would be interested in covering that. And I'm not sure who is exactly all here today, but we're going to find out as we get the introductions going. But if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. If you have questions, please put them in the comment section. If I don't get to them right away, it primarily is due to the fact that maybe I'm on a different subject matter and I don't want to interrupt the flow. But I promise you, I make a little note and I will get to them. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing up Maestro Carlito, and we're going to kick this off. Hey there, how are you? Oh, hello, Dean. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> man, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome day. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. And uh, so, uh, as Dean said, we have this uh, monthly meeting with our uh, Serata group. Um, there's uh, 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 a few of us who uh, graduated with uh, uh, Marong Angel uh, over the years, and uh, we uh, de uh, we decided to uh, uh, start working together and at least uh, meet uh, meet every month. Uh, so that way we can just stay in touch and uh, see what everyone's doing, and so. Um, so we have several people, and, and, and we, we don't always get together all at the same time. Uh, everyone kind of lets, you know, rotate when they come in. And uh, so uh, right now, let's see, uh, uh, I'll have everyone come up here in a little bit. But right now, in the right, uh, uh, just myself here right now, that uh, 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 stickman Jeff Finder here, uh, Frank Williams is here today. Um, let's see, uh, June Kujiko, uh, of of uh, Stockton multi Stockton here with uh, with uh, 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 yeah, and then the, the rest of our our, uh, our students here, and uh, so um, and I suspect a little more people are going to start trickling in oh, as just we in? Okay. Uh, 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 continue. So all right, um, Maestro, the noise I'm in the background is um, the audience is hearing it too. Can you turn down the other one? Uh, what do I, I, are we getting a, a feedback? Yeah, just a little. Okay. Oh, yeah. all right. Turn down. Not major. Yeah, there we'll we do. Go. Perfect. I think. Yeah. How about there? Awesome. Thank you. So. Okay. All right. So this is great. So, um, if folks, if you want to kind of introduce everybody and show, I can lower myself while you're making introductions. Sure. Sure. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let's get everyone together in one spot so we can we can uh come over here guys. Let's have a let's have a seat. So that way, uh, yes. <laughs> is uh, is GM is GM Jeff laughing at me? <laughs> yeah, can we see everybody here? I'm trying to uh, get a little, yeah, uh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, all right, uh, we'll just uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mess up everyone's names if I just try to do everybody. Yeah, just go down I'm gonna let everybody introduce themselves. There's only a sure. few of us here, so, so we'll start on the far side right there. I'm Phil DeBorn. Phil? Phil, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Jingo Tico. Norvik Miro. Uh, Matt, Matthias like Miro. Jeff Finder. Oh, Frank Rilamas. <laughs> David Garmini. Who's David? Tom Osoyan. Brandon Navarro. Anyone else would like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Louder, I can't hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm, and, I, and I'm Carlito Bonjong. And uh, so, so what, what what we do is uh, we just we just kind of uh, get together every month, and we don't have a format yet. And uh, so what we what we what we do is we just got kind of really share informally. Uh, we break into group little groups and and uh, and informally uh, uh, share. And uh, the goal is to work with somebody that that you know from another school, you know. And uh, but everyone tends to gravitate to the people that they know, but over time we started developing friendships you know and 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 uh and uh so um and then as, as we get uh more consistent with our participation uh i think we'll have a more steady format and uh so um what did you want to you what how do you want to start this dean you want some questions first or yeah so no i mean i just think it's just wonderful what you guys are doing getting everybody together here and you know like you would just mention you know maybe folks might not be familiar with some of the other folks but you guys are making a point for them to cross hands and get to know one or leave the comfort zone of who they know i, I guess my first question would be you know how did this come about what was the inspiration and how did this all come together where you guys started doing this <clears throat> i think uh initially um I, I can't remember what month it was, but we had a uh, we we uh, Jeff Finder, one of his students. Uh, uh, he's got a student named Nick Merchant. Uh, who's who's who Nick Merchant? Uh, yeah, out there in New York, and uh, uh, Nick uh, uh, fought in the World Championship in the Philippines, and uh, uh, he, he uh, went over there to represent uh, Serada and and uh, his teacher Jeff Finder who fought. Uh, in uh, back in the early days, uh, fought in the Philippines, and uh, so uh, uh, so he was proud to represent Jeff then, and then I mean uh, now, and uh, so anyway, um, so uh, and uh, so he had a, a, a successful trip, won the championship in the Philippines, and uh, when we got together, uh, Nick Merchant has a family here in the Bay Area, uh, over mm -hmm. here in Northern California, and uh, so his family hosted an event for him here, and uh, so. Uh, we went over there to say hello, and uh, so uh, it was uh, myself, uh, Jeff, Jeff, uh, Master Jeff Finder, uh, uh, Master Frank Williams, uh, and uh, uh, Ron Saturno, and uh, we just got together and and we just started talking, and uh, we just decided why don't we start getting together every month and mm. and and I start working out, and uh, and so so we've been doing that. And so we had to, we had, we, we had to, um, um, we had, we had to stop for a little bit because we had a, we had football season, you know, that kind of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> football season, the flu season, and a uh, mm -hmm. few things got in the way, but uh, we're back here again, and uh, and 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 so we've had uh, uh, several more uh, successful meetings of of late, and uh, so. Um, so you know, so I I think as as we have more as we're more consistent and more steady, I think we're gonna uh, 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 really grow into a, a more cohesive group, and uh, we're looking for great things in the future. You know, more cooperation so we can do more. I mean, the, you know, the one of the things that that uh, uh, we're very proud of uh, is that uh, historically, with uh, with the Filipino martial arts, uh, you know, uh, Stockton has a proud history. Mm. And, and uh, we want to continue to be part of that history, uh, to to be part of the bigger community and uh, be a strong participant. And uh, so uh, I think we can do a better job if we do it collectively. And uh, so that's uh, that's our goal. Absolutely. And so so Nick, so Nick Merchant, that guy. So he was kind of behind all this. He was. Uh, part of the he was part of the uh, the foundation for this happening, the inspiration. I mean, yeah, I, I think I think so. I think it was a big part of it. You know, yeah, because because of him, we all we got together that day. Yeah, Man, that guy is just like he's he's just got he's, he amazing? Of <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy, man. I'm sick of hearing that name, Nick Mercer. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> at any rate, um, no, that's fantastic. That I'm glad he, you know, he was able to inspire you guys, and that <laughs> um, he, of course, is not taking credit. No, here's his uh, comment here. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just happened to get the right guys at the same table at the right time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but, you know, right now, uh, yeah, you started with, uh, uh, we're, you know, we're uh, uh, direct shooters of Angel <laughs> Kabbalah, most of us. And, uh, uh, but what's awesome is that uh, we're, 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 uh, we want to make it available for, for the next generation of students. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we're very fortunate that uh, one of the, one of the, the, uh, the groups here in Stockton, Stockton Multi-Style, uh, they studied under uh, Manong Leo Hiron and also studied under uh, Dental Rebelar. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, they, they participate over here with us and, uh, and give us support. And that's that's, pretty, nice. that, that, that's that's awesome, man. Because you know it's uh, uh, because it, it, it that's the whole spirit of when mm. you know when Prima first started in Stockton. It was about you know all the old manongs, so all the old all the old guys getting together, and uh, over the years that got separated, and uh, so hopefully uh, maybe the next generation can 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 uh, can have a better relationship that you know uh, we can we can all start work towards that. So. I think you're doing it, and I think, and much to your point, I think this younger generation is not going to get caught up what happened three, freaking two or three decades ago. They're going to be more willing to work together and put the past behind, uh, which was probably, for the most of them, not even relevant, or they didn't even, even around there when some of this stuff occurred. So um, I think it's great what you guys are doing. I hope it takes off and continues to grow. Um, to, you know, as far as when you guys get together, do you have, I mean, do you kind of i know you kind of mentioned you you try to focus on different people working together but do you focus on any themes in particular uh, within the art of cabal serata uh not not uh, not not really at this time but uh, one effort though is that uh, i've been working with uh uh, uh master june kutiko just he and he and i uh we uh we've been working uh um uh the last uh uh the last a uh, few months working on uh, on uh, 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 preserving uh, the the old way of uh, of doing spadi daga and uh, uh, going over the different drills and the teaching method. Uh, we want to be able to preserve that to our students and then share it. And uh, and then because everybody has their own versions of of, of how they learn spadi daga pro, through the system through Angel Kabbalahs. And uh, and if we can start sharing uh, everyone's experience, then uh, then I think we're going to have a a, a a better understanding of what that Ispada Daga was. Because uh, when uh, Surada was first introduced to me, um, we were we did a lot more Ispada Daga back then. And uh, over the years, it kind of turned into a a, a single blade or a single baston. Uh, and uh, so I think, uh, uh, but that uh, bringing back that tradition and. Uh, and at least preserving parts of it, you know. So I think I think it's a good thing. Yeah. No, well, so. you mentioned it. In the, you mentioned that yes in the test run, and I found that kind of interesting. That, and it, um, you correct me if I'm wrong. Um, how it, that was like a main focal point, and you know uh, whether it was you know stick and dagger or or or, or actually the sword translation, and um, and then it kind of over time became single the stone or single sword. Um, did that just happen incidentally, or I mean, was there, or just it kind of just occurred? It kind of, I think it just kind of just happened over the years, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I I spoke with uh, uh, Dental Revelar before his passing, and I had asked him. Um, I brought that up to him. Uh, I came in, I came into uh, the Kabbalah's group uh, in 1970, 1979, I believe, and. Uh, and when I came in, uh, we were uh, uh, we still had a lot of uh, use with this Daga, uh, the, the way it was taught, you know, and uh, uh, and, and uh, the and uh, the, the the training method, uh, you know, introducing the different drills uh, that uh, supports uh, that type of system, and uh, and uh, uh, then uh, then. Uh, uh, over the years, it just got got less and less dagger. It came, became more of the empty hand, and uh, so same concept, just not. There's no just without the dagger, you know. And uh, so the thing is that um, a lot of the technique, especially the corto techniques, um, uh, the the some of the closer technique, you know, you really utilize the left hand, and uh, 
and it really makes more sense if there's a dagger on the left hand uh, mm -hmm. and uh you know because uh you know because if you use the left hand without the dagger you're going to get cut but if you have a dagger then you have a tool that can uh, help uh neutralize the other person's uh, uh technique so that way you can free the big weapon to do the kill you know and mm -hmm. or or uh or or uh protect the 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 or sometimes the hidden hand is sometimes becomes the 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 kill hand and uh so the longer weapon protects that one when, when that comes into use you know and uh, so um but uh, a lot of times i we just became the, the empty hand uh with the with the with the sword and uh i mean you know you can you we, we're able to use both uh because we were trained to do both you know and uh uh so uh but i i just but in the, in the beginning i think there was a lot more spidey dog i used compared to the latter stages of of uh of my experience with serata okay so this so i got a two-part question so a it sounds like you guys want to kind of bring this back into the fold and my my second question is the whole lock and block aspect of cabal serata can that be done with solo bastone and empty hand yeah um well first of all let me let me make sure i i, I don't want to misrepresent it it's it's probably never it never disappeared it's no 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 i mean but i guess no. i mean you guys want to make it like you know not i'm not i should probably shouldn't say bring it back but maybe yeah. have more more emphasis on it yeah i think so yeah okay. uh, I, 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 at least um uh, talk about it where because that's where uh that's where the techniques came from you know and uh and and, and even though a lot of uh, guys don't don't use the dagger now at least we can talk about it and uh historically and find out where things came from you know mm -hmm. and uh and, and 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 so that way we understand why why the technique is the way it is you know right and uh so no, 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 no. Yeah, I should have uh, phrased that better. As um, far as like it's making it like it was extinct or something, um, but uh, and I guess um, uh, what was I gonna say there? Um, how is so? You know, I think it's great that you you know you brought uh, Maestro June and is he available to come up with you? Yeah, yeah, June. Uh, let me get a chair. <coughs> Hey, Mr. Long time. How are you? <laughs> so what do you think about this? Like, I mean, you know, you, you happy with all this? It sounds like it's a great thing. It is you a great thing. It is a great you guys thing. collaborating um, get together? Yeah, it's, it's a great thing. Um, I think that um, at least when I was coming up, uh, coming from uh, the Bahana system, Live Her Own, uh, we kind of like didn't get along with Strata guys back then. It was kind of like a there's like an invisible line where we associate with them to the point where, I mean, I don't know where it started, but when I started it back in uh, probably late eighties, uh, that was just the way it was. We just didn't associate with them. So uh, me and Carly have been friends for a long time. So I've always had like a good relationship with him and I have a relationship with a lot of other Serata guys. So I'm glad that we're kind of putting that stuff in the past and we're getting together Absolutely. because um, I have a great time learning from the students and from the other masters here that do Serata and, um, I think a big turning point for us is when we started training with Dental Rebelar, um, learning Serata from him. It kind of shows you that a lot of our a lot of our system between Lee Horon and and um, Angel actually is kind of comparable, kind of unique and like in many ways because they both learn from each other. So it's a good thing. It really is, and I think it's going to make Stockton uh, Filipino martial arts much stronger. I think so too. There's, there's, it's going to show unity. It's not going to show this divide and conquer that you guys are willing to work together. And I think the up and coming students and people are going to see that and they're going to be more inclined to cross train like what you guys are doing so i think you guys are saying a great example in this area you know and i hope it continues um, that's what we're hoping um again carlito was a big um i guess uh person that kind of brought this forward to us um he con came out and contacted me and said hey um i've been training on and off of them um kind of you know when we have time to do stuff together and he just said hey i'm I have this class on sundays I'm gonna try to do a regular thing with some of my students. If you can bring some of your students and we can get together and um, cross train, that'd be a great thing. So we've been doing it for probably the last uh, six months, or about six months or so. Yeah. So um, learning a lot, different things, and it's good to see a different perspective on things. And um, again, uh, building good relationships 
and I mean, me and Carly have already been friends, but with the other people here, Frank and Jeff and everybody else. So um, again, I think it's going to be a really positive things, and I hope it grows. I I'm with you. I hope it does too. And I you know I think it's just going to be a great overall example for the whole FMA community to see what you guys are doing, and, you know, and uh, working together for the greater good. I, I just think it's phenomenal, and I just I wish you guys all the best of luck in it, and just and hope you guys flourish and it grows and and all that. Um, so. I salute all of you guys on that. I really do. I just think it's fun, fantastic what you guys are doing. Um, and so, um, if uh, if you folks, I mean, you know, I just wanted to get some, you know, what you guys are doing, what you're trying to achieve, as far as your goals and all that. And you guys have kind of covered that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of you, so I really want you guys to kind of showcase. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do, so everybody yeah. gets a chance. You know, one thing I'd, I'd like to add, uh, Dean, sure. is that uh, with uh, that, that, that spirit of sharing and, and uh, uh, knowledge, you know, like in this room right here, man, you know, we have, uh, you know, the, the owner of this building, uh, the, the, uh, this is uh, uh, Master uh, David uh, Garmini, and uh, he's, uh, he's been in Taekwondo for many years, and uh, mm. he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's was under the, the, the that uh, he, he was trained under uh, uh, Grandmaster uh, Warwick, uh, the Olympic champion, uh, and uh, and you know so he's you know years and years in martial arts, and then uh, Frank Williams, you know he, under uh, uh, Kempo and uh, uh, Kempo and Kaju Kempo, right, Frank, and, and then Jeff Finder, uh, experience in in Kempo and and uh, uh, other kung fu styles, you know. So there's just years of experience here, man, and. Uh, you know, for us to be able to uh, uh, be able to continue that spirit of sh uh, sharing, you know, I think it's just an awesome thing, man. So, uh, right but, yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. that's one style I got to cover. You know what? I got I always write notes down, and so I have like a like hundred pages of notes around just from all these interviews. Okay, I got to cover this style. Gotta go. And Kaji Kempo, I've yet to cover it, and I really like to. So if anybody wants to step up and do it, if if GM Frank is willing, um, but Frank is here. Yeah, uh, well, just, we haven't gotten around to yet for whatever reason. Yeah, uh, we're hoping to do that as well as a few others. But uh, yeah, so if you, um, however you want to do I, I, it, what do we do? What do we? Uh, you know, your student here, Frank. Would you like to do a, a demo or do some do some? Of course, he will. <laughs> yeah, show us something. I think I think we'll have some of the guys, you know, gonna, like you know, do some don't do some things. We'll we'll start yeah. we'll start start with Frank and one of his whatever he wants to show. Perfect. And, I'll learn myself. Perfect. And whoever else wanna do something, yeah. Or maybe uh, June and, and and these guys can do something in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You guys should, yeah, everyone, all you guys, as much as you want. Everybody can okay. do something. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, so while these guys are getting together, are there any questions uh, that, that our audience have that we can answer for you? Absolutely. Okay. Do any questions that anyone wants to ask? Not, not as of yet, but maybe when the demos start pouring out. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have a uh, the gentleman just uh, one of our my one of my training partners uh, came in, and uh, uh, this is uh, Master David Ma over here. <laughs> And so he's uh, one of my training partners back in the okay. 80s, in the All early right. days. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Just, uh... All right, I'm going to have them do a demo here, and I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay. Where's the... Hey, Tom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You see anything with the rotation, rotation of the camera yeah. here? Or do we just turn the probably just turn the camera around. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. It's always nice to have somebody technical there, right? I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't see a spot where I can turn the camera on. After the demo, I do have a question for, just came in for uh, Maestro Jeff. Uh, for for who's the question for? Uh, Maestro Jeff Finder. We can, you know, um, okay. we can do the demo first and then I can get to it, whatever works. Okay. All right. You guys ready? Sure. Okay. We're going to do a little sparring. So you're gonna do some sobrata sparring? Sure. Uh, uh, like a sobrata? Basics? No, uh, it's sparring. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. I can't see. Can you see? Um, I can see perfect, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Can you? An audience, I'm, if I could see it, they, they must be seeing it. An audience, if for some reason you're not seeing it, uh, please let me know. Yeah, good. Start. <laughs> Okay, so the question for Maestro Jeff is, yep. um, do you still make your own sticks and can you be contacted in regards to stick creation? As he hides his head. <laughs> Unfortunately not. I lost my house in August of 2021 and my shop was in the garage. All my equipment and supplies are in storage, and I get asked this question regularly every week. Okay. I get some <laughs> All right. When well, it came from Chad, sorry, Chad. Um, yeah, it's tough when you're used to having good product, man. Like, yeah. You know, Jeff's product was just amazing. I mean, I still have my, uh, I still, have, I still use these products today. Yeah, I've heard nothing yeah. but great things about them. So the weekend and uh, a couple of the guys there, can you make another compilon or part of us? And it's like, no, I can't do it. And I, I saw some of my old stuff there and I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. He, Big man. He tried. Um so uh Michael Carlito, whatever you want to bring up next or whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh June, you guys wanna show us something? Yeah, sure. Ooh, we got a great question. We got Master June. Okay. Uh, I'll get to um, Eric. Another question came in, but I'll get to it after the demo. Uh, no, no, you can go ahead and ask. You're still getting All right. right. Okay. So the question from Eric Harris is Can yourself and Master Jeff Finder demo an application of the sweet block? Of the sweet block? Yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. Is that my buddy Eric? Eric Harris. Eric Harris, yeah. <laughs> All right, Eric. Yeah, we can, we can, we can, yeah, definitely. Okay. We can, nice. Yeah, we just uh, show you. I'll, I'll, I'll show some different things on, on Sweet Block and Jeff can share his ideas on Sweet Block and good awesome. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> here's a little funny comment here from Glenn. Well, Glenn. Glenn saying, Maybe the group has to go in. And do a rescue counterintelligence. I'm, I'm adding that for Master Jeff's equipment. <laughs> I know, huh? <laughs> you guys have to get together and go incognito and go, uh, you have to figure something out. <laughs> oh my God, man. We will figure out how Jeff can get the equipment back. <laughs> 
So who's up next? Uh, uh, we got uh, June Butico. Oh, okay, great. They're getting ready right now. Sure. <coughs> okay, when you guys are ready. Uh, what, what are you going to demonstrate? It's Paddy Dogger. 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 All right. right. So that uh, that was uh, uh, Ispada Hidalgo drill, and, and uh, so uh, uh, you, you see them do, do a lot of hitting on the sticks, and so uh, so that so instead of doing a controlled hit, they're doing an actual hit. So you know, so they're they're actually popping that stick, so that way they're uh, so they're not holding this the 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 snaps back. You know, those are you know, so that way they're they're actually hitting their target. You know, and uh, so. Uh, and you know, still working with that defanging the the snake theory, working with uh, attacking the hand, and uh, so. Uh, but uh, uh, that's a uh, spada part of the spada, part of one of the, the many spada Hidalgo drills that that uh, okay. that was taught uh, with Angel Cabalos. Nice. Um, do you? Okay, it's up to you. Do you want to? Go with uh, Master Jeff, or do you have somebody else in mind first? Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, I think for Eric, uh, I think I I think I'll I need a can I borrow a stick from somebody? Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue, right? Hey, need to borrow a stick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't you you want to demonstrate the. Uh, uh, why don't you demonstrate a regular sweep lock with somebody, and then I'll do it from a wheelchair perspective. Okay. Okay. So we're talking like yeah. That. So we're gonna do a combination here. Jeff's gonna do a, a, a the sweep lock technique that Eric's asking for uh, with two he and an able body body person, and then uh, then uh, afterwards I'll show how how I we apply it in the in, from a, from a wheelchair standpoint. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I know a guy in a wheelchair, so. So you, oh, you, you guys, you got somebody there that you know? Yeah, I got somebody in a wheelchair. I think that we can, we can, we can model for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking angle one or angle two. Uh, uh, now Eric, does he want uh, for angle one or angle two? He did say, um, just the application of the sweep block. So Eric, if you can okay. just let folks know whether from an angle one or two. Okay, we'll do, uh, we'll do it from a two. Okay. All right, we'll do it from a two, Jeff. Okay. Eric came back with angle one. Oh, Where angle one. <laughs> okay. Where, uh... And we got a quick question from Matthew. What length is the stick used? Oh, yeah, I'll answer that in a minute. This, this... Sure. Okay. Do the demo first. Okay. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Hold on. Here we go. All right. Sweet block. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Strike to the ribs, rib section, uppercut to the arm, to the top of the arm. Okay. Top of the echo. Check at the end if he's still in range. Lock position should be covering his entry if he still has the weapon available. All right. Awesome. Okay. 
yeah, uh, inside tweet or inside blog. Where's uh, Samba? Samba. All right. Yeah, so that was the inside sweep or inside block. Okay. And uh, give me a strike number one. Number one. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, so guess what? You do the same thing. That's, yeah, you know, the only difference is that is I'm, is I'm, I'm sitting down. Okay, as opposed to standing up. All right. I don't want to do too much. I hurt my arm, so. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. So, Maestro, Matthew's question was, what length is the stick used? Ah. Uh, Length, stick. Nineteen. Uh, what is it, Frank? Nineteen inches. Frank says nineteen inches. Nineteen. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jeff. Survey says. This? Stick. What length of stick? Uh, twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. June. Twenty six twenty eight. Twenty six twenty eight. David. Um, I'm not sure. I yeah. So. Uh, we have we came up with different things. Yeah, yeah. And here's one thing though. Generally, uh, we have uh, uh, when when we when when at least from my perspective, this is the, what I remember. Uh, it might be different from it. From, Angel used the 21 inch. Yeah, Angel used 21 inch. Yeah. yeah. So I I made mine 19. Oh yeah. So Frank says Angel used to use 21 inch, and then. Uh, Standard. It's standard. It's okay. Well, standard he, would, he, he would describe from the armpit to the wrist no further than the center. Yeah. Of the ball, right? Yeah. So that the stick should measure proportionally to the individual using it. Yeah. So yeah, De Jeff Jeff uh, Finder just brought up a a, a, a good point. So Mano Angel used to tell us this is how we measure a stick. Okay. So this is what I remember. Okay. So I know people have different versions of it. I think so. Uh, but for me, I was told to uh, stretch my hand out like this, put the, extend, extend it out. Okay, so from uh, so from the armpit, okay, uh, extending past my fingers, my 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 long finger, my pointing finger, yeah. Uh, so extended one full finger's length. Okay, <laughs> that's a long stick. Okay, to the tip of my finger, that's uh, the the. Okay, then to the fold of my hand, okay, where it folds, and then to my wrist. Okay. Yeah, so that would be your short stick to the wrist. And uh, so uh, I know that uh, now most of, you know, most of the, a lot of people, they practice that short. You know, it's short now. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's dagger length. Yeah, when you go wrist to the armpit. And uh, a lot of people are using that, that, that size. Uh, uh, weapon now, you know, so but uh, that's how we used to measure it to the length of our arm, okay? Yeah, you know, so generally so. speaking, it could range anywhere from 18 to 19 inches to yeah, I think so. 28. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, no, no, that, um, I'm sure that's gonna definitely. And we have hey, Nathan. Looks like I'll be seeing you in a few weeks. He's saying hello to you as well. Uh, then we got uh, just to pull you out. Is that? Oh, uh, we got a question here, Maestro. Yeah. So Kurt's question is: Is that so you can conceal it? Is that so that you can? No, it's. Uh, uh, I I I think uh, I I think the 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 the. Uh, the main reason was that you know, like the best use, you know, function, uh, you know, and uh, so uh, for speed and uh, uh, for for, uh, for speed, and then you want you want that 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 length, uh, you, for balance, you know, you don't want it too long, uh, because it's the way we wield we it's the way we wield the 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 the, the weapon, 
uh, and uh, so it's 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 uh, it's perfect for that serrata combination, the length. You know, so if it's if it's way if it's the length is just right for you, then you won't have a problem maneuvering it. Yeah, you know? mm. and uh, so and it all depends on the 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 the, the length. Also depends on the the uh, you know how heavy your stick is. Because I remember one day we came, uh, Ingo, Ingo came in. He had a kamagong stick, and uh, and uh, so he had it in his hand, and he he went to do an abanico technique, a, a panning technique, and it hurt his wrist. Hmm. And uh, so uh, he 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 cut his stick shorter, so that way, uh, so that way it doesn't hurt his stick. Was his it hand. attacking on the wrist? Okay, right, okay. because it was just too heavy, you know, yeah, too heavy of a stick because it was a kamagong, and then okay. uh, so. Uh, once he did that, then everybody started cutting the stick too. Oh, everybody yeah. kind of followed suit. Yeah, okay. yeah, they, yeah. So Manuel cut his kamagong stick short to to balance it right because it's yeah. kamagong. Then everyone cut their rattan stick. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so it's supposed to be a heavier stick. You know, hey, so we, you see a lot of the guys with a shorter stick with a heavy, heavier stick. That that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. And we got a we got a comment here from that guy Nick Merchant. And he's saying, what is Nick saying? That makes sense. So Nick Merchant, you know that guy, Nick Merchant, um, is saying shorter weapon can negate the longer weapons when the fight is up close. Can okay. You... Uh, before we, uh, we answer that, uh, one, one thing before I forget, uh, Master Frank uh, pointed out that, you know, that, that, that the, the length of your stick should conform uh, to the, the the weight the weight of the stick should conform to the to the to, to the strength of your wrist yeah so individually yeah yeah and then go ahead and add something jeff yeah um angel would point out a lot of times folks would use like a long stick but then they would choke up a long distance yeah and so the balance point on that if you cut off the puño would be more equivalent to our shorter stick. And the disadvantage of that long puño is it's easier for someone maybe to hook and disarm. Mm. So you kind of have that hidden puño. Um, we don't need that extra length there. So you can take a 28 inch stick, you knock off six inches, you're going to have something that looks like a 20, 21 inch stick. Yep, that. makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Now, what did, now, now, what point did Nick bring up? So Nick's point is that the shorter weapons can negate the longer weapons when the fight is up and close. Oh, okay, and he's got a lot of experience. So uh, um, Nick, uh, yeah, I, I know. I beat. I went to attend. Uh, well, I well, I guess it was like a few a few weeks ago. Nick, anyway, beat the crap out of cancer. And Nick, I got to give it to him, man. You know, Nick's my man. I, I got. So Nick, Nick is coming under. He's got. I don't know, I'm gonna say it's 24 inches. I think the longest. And I see he's got this guy up against the wall. I, he is just like, uh, you know, going against guys. And some of these guys are using 31 inch length. Um, and so Nick is, man, I gotta give him credit, man. He goes out there and makes it work. Um, yeah. So know. once you get you once you bridge that gap, you can. He he finds that uh, it was easier to have that that shoulder stay yeah. that long reach, right? Okay. Yeah, he's not very friendly with it. <laughs> uh, but uh, whoever else you got, you want to uh, come up and perform, we're ready. All right. Let's see. Anyone else would like to perform and share something? Any thoughts? Yeah. Jeff? Oh, Angel had a good quote on that. Uh, Jeff, Jeff has a quote on the stick link. What was that, Jeff? Oh, Angel would say, I don't care if your stick is a mile long. I can counter it with 18 inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, a question just came in. Yes. Okay. Here's the question from Noah. In what ways can Serata be used in Largo Mono range? Uh, many ways, because Serata has a lot of... Uh, uh, Serata... Uh, there's a misconception. The, the misconception is that Serata is a close-range fighting system. Uh, Serata is an open fighting system. I mean, it fights all ranges, close range, middle. I mean, 
long range and uh and and so the the uh, ha, the just uh, i think it's the word serrata because it means close so when we say serrata we don't say close range we're saying the closing the closing techniques uh you know so so what what, what we mean by that is not closing range but uh closing uh closing your opponent down you know he, he's his technique, you know. So what I mean, they were like uh, we call that uh, uh, serrata lock and thrust. Okay, so we talk about locking. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, we, we we talk about locking, unlocking. We're talking about uh, keying up. Okay, and because uh, we're talking about closing doors and locking the door. And uh, so if you look at Manong Angel's diploma, Manong Angel's diploma has the lock and key, the lock and key in there. So, like for instance. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why it's called serrata is because it's got a closing technique. So what happens is this, uh, David, you know, demonstrate this with me. Let me make this right. point real quick. <clears throat> so, this thing, uh, uh, give me a strike number one. Okay. So what happens is this, when David gives me a strike here. Okay. So when I block this, this area here, I, 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 I cover on top. I, that means I have an opening on this side. I'm closed here, okay? But I I'm open on this side, okay? So can, can you can you see me there? Uh, better. That's better. Oh, you got it better? Okay. So so what happens is this: if if uh, if David flips around and hits me on this side, the the he's going after my opening, right? So but the serrata combination is called closing. So what happens is this: when he flips over, I close that combination. So now, I mean, I close that line. So now I'm, I'm, I close this line, but when I close this line, I open up this line, okay? So now he's gonna come and take advantage of that. Now I'm gonna close that. Now this is where Ispada Indaga makes sense because if I had a dagger in my hand, that would be, that would be, that would be the catch here, okay? But I don't have a dagger in my hand, you know? So, so, you know, so that, it would be here. Okay, all right. So I don't have a dagger in my hand, so I would have to I would have to tuck that. Okay, and let it pass. So what happens is give me one here. Okay? I'm opening here, I have an opening here, I close that, I have opening on this side, I close that, I'm open on top now. I close that. Now I I close the middle. What happens? What happens when we close the door at night for the last close? What do we do? Lock it, right? That's why this is called lock. Mm. That's why that's called lock. Because we're closing the door, now we're gonna lock it, okay? And this is what we call keying up. So if I'm here, if I'm here, I close the door here, boom, here, and then boom, this is called keying up. This is my key, I'm gonna key it up. I, I lock it and I unlock it right there, okay? That's why it's called serrata lock and thrust. Okay, okay. Thank you, that was... Uh... Don't you, yeah, don't you so, yeah. So that's uh, um, that's working the that's where the working the medial quarto range. But of course, we have largo range too, and uh, it's just uh, uh, lar you know, just learning how to maneuver uh, that that range. You know, so, um, uh, so you know, that's that's the whole thing. You know, it's uh, Serrata works all range, uh, long and short, because that's yeah. where the fight is. You can't dictate the fight. The it's going to be what it's going to be. What's that? I can definitely see the misconception why people would th think that it's on the closer end. You know, when if the people are observing lock and block and all, you know. And I can yeah, see well, why one they thing though is that I, I, I will have to say this, that many of the many of the drills that we do have, okay, uh, in, in the Kabbalah system, um, uh, the, a lot of it has to do with the medium and close range. And my own angel used to say is that you know his his thing was to go to the escape position, escape position to your largo position. That's where you want to be. That is, he says that one thing that he emphasized all the time is you never want to be on the inside. You know, and, but if you are get caught in the inside, you want to be the best at it. You want to be better than the other guy. Mm -hmm. You know, because if he can't maneuver in the inside, he can't get out. But if you know how to handle the inside, you'll be able to get out. You know, so, uh, you know, so because th that's a trap. If you don't know how to get into the, if you don't know how to get out of a trap, what are you going to do when you get in there? You know, 
And mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was his thing. Solve the, so, solve the close range dilemma, be the best at it. And uh, fighting on the outside is, is just a bonus, because mm -hmm. uh, that's where you want to be anyway. You know, that's more natural. All right, we got a few more questions that came in. So this is from Nathan. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, what was that, Dan? So we got a couple questions that just came in. Okay, so here's the first <laughs> question from Nathan. Did GM Angel ever cover drawing the sword from the scabbard and attack defense? Some of the feeds yes. in Serata, the 12 angles, look like you were holding the scabbard whilst... Yes. Is that... Yes. Okay, he covered that? Yeah, okay. yeah the answer to all of that is yes. <clears throat> All right. And the next is from Nick. Could you gentlemen share the ideas regarding the lock closed position and its importance and prevalence in the system? That's from Nick. Okay. The idea about the lock? Yeah, the, the lock and position. closed position. Jeff, you want to cover that? I thought you just did. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I. Let's this, this do it again. <laughs> no, I, I thought Carlito just covered it. <laughs> Maybe. Um, shutting down your opponent's line of attack. Yeah, you're shutting down your opponent's line of attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, is, there, is there any particular thing you wanted out of that, though? No, he was just saying if you um, just, he really wanted to know if you guys could share ideas regarding that position and its importance to the overall system. Yeah, I oh yeah. So so this is what Mano Angel used to say: lock, 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 lock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think yeah I think well David 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 just uh, mentioned about uh, demonstrating lock and block. Okay, and uh, so and the, what, that was one of the most important thing that Mano Angel used to talk about. Okay, close get to the closer you can lock. Get to the closer okay. you can lock. Okay. And, and and the reason why is because uh, uh, it's, 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 it's what we call a reset, okay? Okay, reset. So uh, whether it's boxing, wrestling, you know, uh, you, there's always a uh, you always run a there's always a, like a, a three part or a four part combination, right? And once you run out of your combination, you have to reset, okay? So that reset is important because because you don't want to be stagnant, you don't want to get caught dead. Okay, you want you want to you want to you want to make sure that 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 reset you're still alive. So that means you're 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 still flowing. That's why in in Iskrima, the Filipino martial arts, we talk so much about the flow because we don't want dead time. Dead time, uh, uh, dead time in action means dead. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you don't want that. You always want to be flowing. You know, so if your weapon is not flowing, your mind should be flowing. You know, that's why the flow is so important to us. You know, and one of the things that Mano Angel so used to emphasize is locking, locking, locking. Okay, and uh, closing to the lock, closing to the lock. And uh, so this is what I talk about this all the time to my students and uh, uh, covering co uh, covering lock and block. Um, um, I, I I think you know. Um, it, in in, in uh, what what I find when I'm talking to people when we're to, we're discussing Serada, uh and we when we bring up the word lock and block, they they think of the 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 right uh, the one one hand having a short stick, the other hand having a long stick, uh, is Pade Daga a type uh, scenario, and uh, so there's that that, that uh, left right left right feeding, and uh, and uh, so. Uh, when you look at that combination, they're looking at, at, at that one, two, three, come one, two, three, one, one, two, three, you know, and, and uh, so, but there, there's more to that, you know, there's broken rhythm, you, you know, timing and uh, working that combination and, and uh, breaking your opponent's uh, timing and uh, uh, breaking, breaking out the rhythm so that way, you know, uh, you, you're going from matching to non-matching. Uh, so, so you're always keeping your the person that the feeder is always keeping the other person guessing, you know. And, and there's a point in this exercise where the feeder becomes a defender, you know. If you do this correctly, the feeder becomes a defender, 
and, and they're both benefiting from this, you know. And but a lot of times uh, people just think it's that one side's feeding, the other one is receiving, you mm. know. But it's a two man drill, you know. So let's. Uh, you want to cover that, David? Lock and block. Okay. All right. And then I got a question, or one or two after that. Okay. Uh, while we're setting up, uh, Master Japan right. is going to okay. explain something about the lock. Okay. Sure. Yeah. A lot of what Angel did was based on measurement. And so the lock position, the idea is um, when you're shutting someone down, you know, the stick, you know, you, you have your offense, your defense. When you're in the lock position, um, you know, the idea is that you're using the part of the stick close to the hand so that you have good leverage to trap. So, you know, you do a strike, you come over the top, you do the lock, you'd say you're measuring your opponent. So <laughs> sometimes people will go to the lock and then they just drop the weapon down and do this. But it's important to remember that if the person still is able to fight, when you do that, you're measuring their ability to come and attack. So you don't want to just give up that position. All right. I think they're ready. Okay. All right, we're ready. All right, so here's uh, Master David Ma and uh, Tom. Uh, they're going to demonstrate uh, a drill called lock and block. Awesome. Hey, Maestro, I got a couple questions that came in. Okay. Okay. So this is from Paul. When I learned Serata, we learned Serata, uh, Girona, Largo, Villabril, and Cadena de Mano. Do you guys still teach all four arts? Do we still teach? Uh, uh, so that yeah, he mentioned four things. I repeat that when he met, he said oh, Villabril. Things, yeah. What he's in making inclusive is Serata. Uh -huh. And Garona Largo, Villa uh -huh. Brille, and Cadena de Mano. Yeah, you know, uh, those of us who studied with Angel Cabalas, we we well, we we only know Serrata, Cabala Serrata, and Cadena de Mano is because that's a Stockton thing. You know, so a lot of us will do Cadena de Mano uh, because you know that 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 was a that was developed out of Stockton. And uh, so uh, that was a collaborative effort with Manong Angel and uh, Max Armento. And oh, uh, the empty hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. but we do Serrata, but Villa Brill uh, was a different system, but related uh, related to Serrata, you know, through, uh, you know, we, we, we can trace the history through, well, you know, oral history, uh, okay. you know, with the zone and Villa Brill and, uh, uh, yeah, so um, so I don't know how much they're related, but I, we do do know that you know they were associated with each other. And uh, it's kind of like the Brad Pack when they were in the Philippines, the docks, and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, with yeah. Illustrissimo, with the whole right. That was a bad crew, man, huh? Oof. Yeah, I want them trying to collect money from me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, we do got a question here from Brian, and Brian's question is, so it seems to me that the overall strategy is to close distance while defending the most likely next targeted line of yourself until you can gain a dominant position on your opponent. That's Brian's question. Did you even get that? I can repeat it. What was that? I, I can I can repeat it again if you guys want me to. Yeah, repeat that. Sure. 
So again, this is coming from Brian. His question is, so it seems to me that the overall strategy is to close distance while defending the most likely next targeted line on yourself until you can gain a dominant position on your opponent. Yes, yeah, I, yes or no. Well, if you would watch Angel doing demos, he was always kind of floating in front of the other person's hand and controlling that range until he had an opening to close, you know, for kind of a finish. Yeah. But it wasn't always just, you know, moving in constantly. It was controlling range in, out. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that Manong Angel uh, uh, used to point out is uh, being able to read the other person. Okay. Yeah. You know? And uh, so uh, it's just the, the, the opening move. You know? I'm going to move, see what you do. You know, and uh, so, uh, but uh, his thing was that his thing was to to hit, to strike. Mm. Okay, so uh, so if I'm gonna give you a strike, I'm not gonna give you a fake strike. I'm gonna give you a real strike. Okay, because if you miss it, then it was a real hit. Okay. And if I double up, it was a fake hit, but it was still a real hit. Okay, because there was never a fake hit. You know, so everything that every move I have should be a kill hit. Okay. You know, or a potential to be a kill hit. Potential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so we got a couple more questions that just came in and uh do, 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 do. All right, let me just there we go. Okay, so we had Brian's. Okay, so this is from Kurt. Can you go into explanation about the Serata footwork methodology? I don't I'm not good with footwork, so <laughs> I'll let somebody else answer that. All right. <laughs> Angel called it the papete. Uh, sometimes it's now referred to as replacement step. And replacement we tend step. to emphasize the forward or the male triangle. Okay. So, you know, if we're in a right lead, um, you know, maybe we're favoring an attack coming towards our left side, we would have a right lead. And if the attack comes from the other side, the replacement step would be we step up to the left foot so the feet are together and then back with the right. We've now shifted sides, so we're kind of dividing our left and our right. And sometimes you'll see people with the footworks just kind of going ch -ch 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 like that because, you know, you kind of hear that little drum beat. We heard a little bit of that um, with the lock and block demo out here. Uh, mm. This ability to shift direction very quickly. But um, again, it's like uh, we, we don't step back and step forward because if our opponent has forward pressure, if we step back and he steps forward, we've lost ground. So the idea of that forward triangle and holding that position is we hold the ground on which we stand. And of course, you know, we can move from there as we need or, or want to, but we want to develop the ability to hold our ground. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, actually, um, okay. That's pretty much covered that. Um, uh, work together. My second teacher. Yeah, uh, Frank, you want to add something to that? Yeah. Good. Um, Oops. Oops. I lost my camera. <laughs> Are we right? What I was going to say is that um, without any arrogance, without any malice or egos, uh, to all you Serata brothers and all the Serata practitioners all over the world, I'm confident there's two versions of Serata. And this version that I practice, the basic foundation is structured on a 50-50 stance with pivots, with beats and rhythm, closing the gap, Minimizing your movements. Okay. 
Thank you. No, thank you. That makes sense? Makes sense. Yeah. My version is uh, I stand on a 50, 50 stance. And I utilize pivots because in, in a fast motion, there's no time to switch to the triangle. You just pivot. So if I was here, and the strike coming to my left side, I make this block. And the, the other strike is coming to my right. It's so fast, I don't have time to switch, so I just pivot. Mm. So there's no time I wasted. And at the same time, you counter at the same time. That makes sense? Absolutely. Yep. So even if it's so fast here, 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 or even if I'm my right lead, if I block here and the strike's coming to my right, boom, I'm ready to strike here. Mm. Block here, block, block, block. I don't have to switch unless I have to. Maybe my lead foot will get tired. So I just lift it up. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Great. Thank you. We got another question in. This is from Noah. My second teacher taught me a blend of Serrata and Balintawak. In what ways could the two styles work together according to your guys' eyes? It can't. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Banish, uh, banish Noah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you. I. Uh, they were kind of like similar in in some ways and different in different ways. So mm. I mean, in in other ways. Uh, one thing though is that uh 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 i think it could work you know yeah there would be something good so yeah, the different. Right? yeah so um is the both from cebu uh there's a concept that's kind of out there that the winter walk is always with the stick pointed up if they don't have any you know like down positions but I know someone who trains with uh, Grandmaster Nene, and he says that's not necessarily true. Mm. So I don't know that much about the Lintuak, but their footwork, they always kind of, you know, they're always in a pattern where if I have a right lead, the other person has a right lead. If I step back with my right, he steps forward. So it's that's what I've right seen. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um. No, no, right. I mean, there's got to be something that could possibly be blended in there. Uh, I'm just making sure I'm not missing any other questions. Let me just see here. We get the foot replacement in advance. So there's something called it stumpers. Wasn't a dig. Just curious about the shuffle step. I prefer a 49.51 stance. <laughs> uh, Renee from Canada. Um, yes, no, I can't. And don't ever ask anything like that again. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding Noah. thank you for the question um, <laughs> our flow drill is almost similar and attack the fan of blunt walk it's quintata okay um all right so i'm part up on the questions and comments i think if all right so uh all right so whatever you want it i mean it's up to you guys you guys want to show more i know you guys probably end of course want to get a workout in but I'm here for you guys. If you guys want to show more, I'm more than happy to give you guys the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else want to share something? Again, we can just play. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to get the younger folks out there playing, whatever you want to do, we're seriously. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Not that I've come in. Um, let me just see. Ron Saturno just commented. My footwork version is intuitive response. If they push, I ble bleed their power with footwork movement. If they recede, I attack from angles. If they stay, I beat on them while moving to the outside. I don't depend on being stronger and more faster. 
uh, in all cases, don't stay where they can't find me. These guys here are great. I'm sick today and can't be with these guys. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. Uh, jam run. Oh, wait, we another one did come in. A question. Uh, and this is from Nick. Can they share and discuss the importance and application of spinning the stick? Is it it's it is brutally misunderstood. Uh, the stick spinning? Yeah, Nick is saying it's misunderstood. And could you explain explain the importance and application of it? Does anyone want to explain the spinning of the stick? You mean the twirl? Twirl? You mean the twirl? Yes, Frank. Yeah, it's not spinning; it's a twirling. Uh, Nick is saying it's for the application of the spinning stick. So maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he meant twirling, and it, he meant twirling. it is twirling. Yeah, and he's saying it's misunderstood. Yeah. Secondary strike after you throw a pick. If I were to throw a five and I twirl, so it's just changing the direction of your strike when you twirl. All that is. Yeah, I think I think it all depends on how it's you know. What you're doing with it? Uh, on, a simple, uh, on a simple level, you're generating a greater distance for the tip of the weapon to travel. Gen so, uh, generating some momentum. A strike, a spin, maybe can generate a little more power. Yeah, right. I, I, uh, this I, I I cover that in my seminar. So, uh, the, I, I, not one point, one aspect of it. Okay, let me cover one aspect. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. Can I borrow somebody's stick? <laughs> Tom, I'll I'll go work with you. Uh, that twirling is just nothing but uh, changing the direction. Whatever strike you're delivering. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you can I mean like a uh, good point, Frank. Uh. uh uh, uh, he's talking about uh, having a secondary strike. Like, for instance, if I, if I, if I, uh, can you can you see me here? Uh, if I throw, yeah, no, you're fine. If I throw a one, I can twirl and get a secondary. Okay. If I throw a five, I can twirl and get a secondary. Okay. You know. So, and then one of the things that you know, you'll you'll see this a lot right here. Okay. You know. And uh, so, I hurt my arm, so I'm gonna have to come, come again closer, Tom. So I hurt my arm, so I'm gonna have to do this. See if I can see if I still can do this. You know, so one of the things is that this is what this is a this uh uh I don't want to hurt my arm here. So uh you know, one of the things is that uh, this uh, 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 a momentum uh it's uh, this is a, a momentum disarm. You know, so one of the things right there. See, okay. So if I'm here, right here, right here, comes off. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's from the twirl. Okay. Oh, so you're generating momentum to power. I got you. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then uh, the other one too is here, right here. Okay, see, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's from the twirl. Okay. okay. And and uh, so that's a uh, part of the application of why why we twirl. Yeah. You know? And uh, you know, so uh, like here, like if I hear boom, right? There's a there's a hit here. Okay. And then so the the twirl is here. Okay, so when I so when I do this here, it comes off. Okay. See? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and that's for that's from that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the more twirl, questions have come in. Delivered uh, any strike. If I deliver a one, I deliver a three. Right, I could do my fan here and twirl. So anywhere, five, I twirl, boom, boom, boom. And then uh, at any angle, throw an 11. So it's part of picking? That's correct. Part of picking. <coughs> okay, you're great just, point. You're just changing the direction and the angle of your strike. That's what a pick is, right? So it, that that twirl can be delivered at any angle. A two, there's one, one, a twirl, fan fan, whatever. Three, four, 
So whenever you deliver any strike, I can always go to that Mr. Reliable, your tour file. Six, can I do that? Of course I can. Seven, there's the tour. Any angle uh, up to 11. Does that answer the question? I think so, yeah. And that was really good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we got a few more that came in, Maestro. Okay. Um, and I'm going to just get to them. I want to do this. Okay, so where the heck is that? Here we go. Um, uh, oh, all right. This is from uh, Brian. He would like to know what are some of you guys' favorite disarms? Favorite disarms? Yeah. You just showed a few. Uh, I hit the wrist. Hit the wrist. Yeah, there you go. Right, hit the wrist. <laughs> my, my personal opinion, my humble opinion. Yeah, I think if the uh, if the other person's arm comes off, I think that's that's, that's a good disarm. Right? <laughs> uh, Chop the arm off. That's a disarm. So, you know, there could be situations where, you know, maybe you're attacked, you don't have a weapon, but you're grappling for your opponent's weapon. Angel didn't do disarms where the weapon would fly away and hit the ground, not too much, because you never knew, you know, the person might have a friend that picks the weapon up to use it. So, you know, Angel had a lot of um, jujitsu-like disarms. Uh, in fact, when he and Wally J met, they watched each other work out and were both going, yes, that's correct. Mm. Uh, so when Angel would do a disarm like that, he would always control the weapon, take it, and use it against the person. And there were a variety of techniques he had for that. But they were all very close, small circle type movement. Okay. Um, make sure I'm not missing any. Okay, uh, Renee's got a question. Um, Empty hand. We have both. I know. Um, that's what I'm asking. What is he asking? Yes, you are, if you're disarming with, with uh, a knife or a sword, sword, weapon, weapon, then just. Yeah, uh, Master yeah. Frank was uh, making a point. You know, do, doing this art. Uh, yeah, um, uh, uh, are you, are you, are you talking about being empty-handed and the other, or, or you having we, a weapon too? If um. Yeah. He just said, yeah, he left it kind of generic. He didn't specify a weapon or whether it was empty hand versus weapon. Um, and hopefully, maybe he'll come back and clarify that. Brian, if you choose to. Um, but I do have a few more questions that came in. Um, Renee wants to know, uh, do you, how do you guys, as uh, far as sparring goes? And um, I'm going to assume uh, you guys, some of the drills you guys do, you're emulating that, I guess. Um, but I don't want to answer that uh, for you guys. But uh, Renee's question was, "How about sparring?" Um, yeah, when when you when you, yeah, uh, I I I think sparring, you know, uh, over the with the Serata group, they're kind of like that could have different meaning, you know, sparring, you know. Uh, so. Um, are you talking about like uh, combat sparring type, you know, with, with equipment? Uh, Renee, if you're still watching, um, what type of sparring? Because um, when it when it comes to when it comes to like uh, uh, we we have you know we used to have a lot of before, uh, you know, they they we didn't have choices as far as uh, having good gears, yeah. You know? So there were there we used to be a lot of drills before. Uh, you know, people work with drills because you know they you did you, you know, uh, and the good gear was hard to come by. You know, oh, okay. And okay. Uh, so, but over the years, the gears got better, so people do a lot of sparring now. Because of the gear, based on the gear improving and what have you, and yes. more accessible. Like okay. right. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, so it's changed, you know. It's uh, and it all depends on what you know what the goal is, you know. Mm. Is it just to to hit sticks, or are we you know thinking about you know getting bloodied with a blade, you know? Mm. And uh, so you have to you have to you know in the old days you have to acknowledge what you're going to be working with, 
You know, yeah. is it going to be blade concept? You know, and and uh, and 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 adhere to the rules. You know, so yeah, so because uh, yeah, but then you know, yeah, and then especially when 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 the equipment's got better, you know, you know, everyone's got better equipment, they don't even you know kind of forget what light what light blade is about. You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's just it's just learning poor habits about walk, walking in there carelessly yeah, trading. Uh, knowing that you're not going to get hurt because you have a, yeah. you're have you wearing a good equipment no you know? trading and stuff i got you yeah yeah so yeah. it's all you know but i i think i think i uh, my my personal opinion is that i think you should spar you know i think that if you if you if uh you know if if you want to learn how to fight you got to go in there and learn how to fight you know it's just it's it's, it's a fighting art yeah, yeah. Right. and uh, you you have to have you have to have exercises and drills that that will give you simulation of fighting, you know, and uh, so uh, we have good gears now, so we have to pick your gear gears and then figure out uh, you know what what kind of rules you want to put in there to still uh, emphasize blade training, you know, mm -hmm. to not be so careless and forget about uh, you know having a blade. Okay. Yeah, no. So, but I think it's important. I think sparring is very important. Oh. Yep. I, 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 I will admit that you know I don't do enough of that in my class. You know, so but I, I I definitely agree with people that spar. Okay. And Brian did come back and really what he said was he just wanted to know which disarms you enjoy to do empty hand or with weapons. Um so um and we do have another question from chad what are some of the basic common use or rotted disarms and are they different from other styles so the, I, actually we can kind of blend oh, yeah, chad with brian this question so i guess yeah. the more common disarms and are they different from other styles um I um y yes or no okay yeah I mean you know there is there, there, there's disarms that, that we learned at the Serata school specifically for you know for us and what they were for uh uh they may may or might I don't know if they differ from other styles. Uh, but we don't throw the weapon away. And that's I think one big difference for a lot of. Yeah, people. I I think a lot. Yeah, I think one of the points Jeff was making is that uh, the 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 disarms that Marong Angel used to teach is is to make sure that you keep the other person's weapon. Don't oh, just let okay. it drop to the floor. You know, so okay. that don't do any good for do you to get invited to do another seminar though because that flying stick this arm uh, i really love to do that because that's what i get invited for <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's just that the more elaborate i can do a disarm the more people love it <laughs> so, no, that's, that's what's the fun. goal yeah yeah you know yeah. but i think i think i think yeah working on disarms that work man you know really mm. the simple ones yeah, you know, simple ones, and and the simple ones is the one that where you grab the, make sure that the weapon doesn't leave you. It leaves them, but it doesn't yeah. leave you. And yeah. you can, you're able, right? Control and hang on to it. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I'm missing any other questions. I let me see. I just want to make sure. I got everything. Uh, my gosh, what's going on here? Okay, yeah, caught up. Yeah, so it's up to um, no, I, I mean, if you guys didn't, you know, anything else, we can wrap yeah, up. You know, you know there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of disarm, you know, we talk about, man, you know, uh, uh, you know, I I kind of I I kind of struggle with that because you know to me a good disarm is like if I chop your arm off 
if you are, if we I have a blade, you have a blade, and I give you a good cut or I chop your mm. arm off, your arm comes off. That's a good disarm, right? You can argue that. Yeah, you know. So you know, uh, you know. But at the same time, same token, you know, if I if if you have a stick and I have a stick and I can grab your stick away from you, that's a disarm too. And I don't have to cut you to do that, yeah. you know. And uh, you know, so, um, but I, I I think for the most part, I think people were more concerned with the bladed disarms, mm. you know, yeah, bladed disarms. So so what I mean by that, if somebody gives you a one, and you strike their arm, that's a good disarm. Yeah, yeah. So, but if I have to block. And then try to maneuver to try to get that weapon out of their hand. That's not a good disarm. No. Too much not risk. Not want a high percentage, anyhow, right? Right. Yeah. That's a low yeah. percentage disarm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, but hey, uh, yeah. But if I if I if I don't have anything in my hand, if I my, I have my hands are empty, and the other person has a blade, and I have a way to get to their blade, I get. I'm gonna go for it. Mm. You know? Yeah. Don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. You want to know what you're doing. That, that's right. And Jeff Finder says, "We, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. You want to know what you're doing." Right. Mm-hmm. So, in the moment, we all right understand the mechanics of the situation. You want to understand the mechanics of the situation, so you have to practice it. I, I, I definitely. You know, here's one thing: people talk about you know disarms don't work and this whatever, but you know what, man? There we have enough videos. Okay. You can, I can pull out enough videos where ordinary people have disarmed blades, you know, live blades that people are swinging at them, you know. And uh, so, does this arm work? Yeah, does uh, this arm work at the right time, you know? Yeah, no, there's definitely video evidence, sure. So, I pulled off uh, one of Angel's disarms uh, in the Philippines in the tournament. Uh, and again, if you're looking for a disarm, you're thinking too much, that doesn't really work but uh when it happened to me it was just it was so sudden i was shocked but um i basically it was a twisting disarm and i just ripped the stick out of the guy's hand his eyes got really big and i threw the stick on the ground because you know it was a tournament but uh again it was just you know the the guy hesitated for a moment my hand just shot out and ripped the stick and knowing how to do the twist where the pressure was uh, one of the keys in our disarms when we do these, Angel pointed out, disarm always goes this way. We work against the thumb. Yeah. Uh, at least you go in and learn, learn the mechanics and the principles of it. Yeah. So. No, definitely. Um, well, this has been great. So, uh, um, and it, yeah, I, well, again, I appreciate you guys doing this. And um, I hope you guys are going to have time to work out or do whatever you guys normally oh, do. Work. This is fun, man. This is so great. This is awesome. Where do we eat? <laughs> yeah. We're thinking about eating now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you guys, you know what? You guys just should do that. You, know, you guys go, go get a snack. You guys definitely put... <laughs> <laughs> it's time to give Terry Joven a call to see if he's got a barbecue going. I'm telling you, man. I'm, him and Brian Rodriguez, they're both like the barbecue champions, man, running neck and neck. <laughs> you got to come down to Stockton one day, Dean. Oh, no, tell me about it. I'm due. I, actually, I'm going to wait for Nick to bring me there. So. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have a good time, man. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I, I would love to. Yeah, I got – there's so many um, – so much stuff on the yeah. bucket list to go to. Yeah, to like yeah, doing so you, channel, want, you want to stay you know? for a couple of days. Yeah, oh no, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely stay for a couple of days. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. um, right. There's a little position. Flip to the head. Okay. We got, oh, the chat saying thank you. All right, Nick is saying uh, thank you for sharing and demonstrating. It's all honor to have learned hit sticks with you all. And that was nice from Nick. Okay. Um, but again, I want to thank all of you for doing it. And, and uh, Maestro Carlito, thank you so much for uh, you know making this happen. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Dean. Uh, yeah, thank you. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can't we can't share with the community if we you know we didn't have you and you know to to help us do that. Uh, oh, now you give us such a, I mean, your show gives us windows to what 
others are doing you know it's pretty mm. awesome man no yeah, well thank you it's a thank smaller, you, thank you. it's a smaller community you know because everyone's sharing so i know i hope it continues i really do i, I you know i i hope so and you know you know but uh uh we're still you know i, I know gm ron was was ill but gosh i would still like to get you know a bunch of you guys on together with gm ron you know if that can happen so. uh maybe one day we can kidnap that guy yeah i'm gonna tell you man just you guys are gonna have to bring him home and just lock him in your house for an overnight so we have him the next day <laughs> yeah yeah we'll we, uh, we'll 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 send our squad and ninjas after him <laughs> yeah i think that's what's gonna happen i think what we'll to do is i'll go out there with nick and then me and nick are gonna have to uh come up with a plan yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh <laughs> But again, I want to, for the folks that I don't know, I want to thank you guys for coming and doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, respect to all of you. And, and again, you know, much appreciation for you guys coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. All right. You guys have a good rest of the day. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> awesome. All right. You guys take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. And that wraps up episode 393. Uh, that was a good one, man. Yeah, she just uh, too bad, huh? GM Ron was was ill, but we'll keep trying. We keep trying to get him on. Um, so, but at any rate, who is next? Who is next? Um, it's got to be Brian or Tom. Yeah, I'm not really uh, should know this, but I don't know it. Um, I know one of those two will be doing an interview. <laughs> you know, it doesn't help much. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I will be coming back on doing, uh, who do I got scheduled, even though I'm not as frequent? Um, I got it right here, actually. Uh, Christopher Baum Kuntau, uh, Tim Hartman and Terry Dow for the Symposium in New Hampshire, Don Cuesta, I got to call him. And uh, I think a few other folks. Um, oh, Steve Sachs. And Matt Berry. Foxhound. Dog Brothers. East Coast. That will be coming on too. So, but at any rate, yes, please continue to check it out. All the future interviews are always pinned to have any discussion so you guys can easily see what is coming up next. But I know Tom. Uh, Tom O'Brien got something coming up. So, anyway, folks, thank you to those who uh, watched, commented, asked questions, and we'll see you next time.